there is a plus saying in leadership that if you think you are leading and there is nobody following you, you are only going on their walk. On this platform, you are going to learn principles of leadership. You are going to encounter different leaders. You are going to learn about how you can grow as a leader, how you can make an impact. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the host for the leadership platform. I am a leadership coach, a lawyer by profession, a John C. Maxwell certified coach. I have been in corporate life in senior positions for several years and now I run the Center for Transformational Leadership where we train and coach leaders to become better leaders. And I invite you to go on a journey with us as we discuss the subject of leadership in the coming weeks. This and every Saturday, you have opportunity to ask questions, share your views on important leadership matters. My name is Elsie and I'm excited that I just completed a 15 week journey with the CTL Africa team on the 15 laws of invaluable growth by John C. Maxwell. From the law of pain, I also learned that every problem introduces a person to himself. Honestly, so you face a problem, you wouldn't know the, the, the things that you actually have within you. The journey for me personally was a wake up call. Before I joined this journey, I wasn't actually learning at all. I wasn't adding any logic to my what I need. So the law of trade off is saying that you have to give up to, to grow up. So things that I think are not going to have uh, you know, maximum impact on my life, I have to trade them off. I want to grow. I am not stopping now. I am continuing. And as far as I'm concerned, like it says, you cannot give what you don't have. I definitely will have to give what I have learned off to others and then get more so that I can continue giving. I am not going to be a reservoir. I am going to be a river. And therefore, I'm going to continue learning to be able to give off my best. Ordinary people can achieve extraordinary results on a consistent basis if they have a system, if they have a plan. Navigating through life without a coach or a guide can be very deceiving, making you come to think that you have achieved the highest or the best you can ever, or you have made the best of decisions. But until you become very intentional and take a good stock of your life, you would not realize that it's a mistake. Pain helps you to come out of your comfort zone. Uh, the law of intentionality and the fact that learning is a lifelong journey if you want to be significant. The emphasis on significance. Previously, I used to be very unintentional about the things I do. When it comes to my family, my work, my Christian life, and basically everything that I do. In the pursuit of that growth, there are gaps. There are gaps that we need to conquer. These gaps include the knowledge, perfection, mistake, inspirational, timing, and assumption gap. And I will encourage you to be part of CTL Africa's 15-week growth journey. I encourage you all out there who need to live their life to be part of CTL Africa's growth journey. Please take advantage of this program and your life will never be the same. Thank you very much CTL Africa and continue to impact the world. God bless. You see, the only thing you've got to worry about tomorrow is making sure that you make today count. 
This is your day to learn how to change your world. I need you to focus on why you were born. Let's not lose what made us, but let's grip the future. And let's become the best version for next year. Most success is when a person develops ordinary qualities to an extraordinary degree through the application of hard, sustained work. Now, for some people, this is not easy, but there is no good reason for not doing it. You and I were created to make a difference. Hello, 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 hello. Good evening and welcome to the Leadership Platform. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm excited this evening once again to meet all of you and to facilitate uh, this evening's program on the Leadership Platform. Um, at the Center for Transformational Leadership, we delight in bringing to you every week lessons that will enrich your understanding of leadership. And this evening, we are going to go right to the basis of what leadership is and how you can acquire leadership. So uh, we're going to try for this evening to be very interactive. So we want to encourage you to get ready, get your questions ready um, as we prepare to um to to learn about leadership now i want to encourage you to please introduce yourself um, whether you're joining from facebook or youtube if you're joining from facebook please like our pages share um, with your friends and colleagues invite them to join right now and we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel so that you can receive um, this program notification as and when they come. And I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us where your name and where you are joining from, because that is our delight to tell the whole world that you are on the leadership platform and invite your friends. Um, I see Douglas Amwate has joined from Tema, and uh, we welcome Douglas as a regular on the platform. Natalia, also a regular. Natalia, you are welcome. Uh, okay, um, Natalia, you're seeing there is a voice echo. Um, all right, so I please just confirm if you still have an echo. Um, Douglas also confirm if there is a voice echo so that we can see uh, what it is so we can correct it. All right. So uh, whilst we wait for others to join, we want to tell you a bit about um, some of our events coming up so that you get ready. If you haven't registered, Hey, by the way, congratulations, Douglas. I've seen your registration for Live to Lead. So uh, thank you so much for taking advantage of that. Well, so Live to Lead is an annual John C. Maxwell Leadership Conference. And those of you who have been on this platform uh, for a while would have heard about John C. Maxwell uh, because... Uh, I am a John C. Maxwell certified coach. Sarah, my partner, is a John C. Maxwell coach. And a few people who have come on this platform are also John C. Maxwell coaches. 
And even for those who have not, uh, who are not John C. Maxwell certified coaches, you may have heard them very often quote from John C. Maxwell because he is the authority on leadership, renowned world expert. And you are going to have opportunity to meet John C. Maxwell, speak to you directly uh, on October 7th. And not only John, but you're going to have other world-renowned uh, leaders and speakers that John himself has personally chosen to join him on that platform. There are going to be five international speakers. We're going to have another five uh, speakers from Ghana who will be led by Patrick Ewa, speaking on the subject of leading with integrity and sharing his experience uh, with us. And many, many other corporate uh, leaders are going to uh, be on the platform. Uncle Ebu White will be there. We are going to have Patricia Bonai. We are going to have Gwen and, and many, 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 many more who will join on the leadership uh, on, the, uh, on, on October 7 on Live to Lead. So we encourage you to register. By the way, the um, early bed uh, window has closed. And so we've kicked in the full registration, which is $79. And at today's rate is $7.99 Ghana City. So please um, get your HR, get, get your MD, get your leaders to sponsor you if you're not able. And please, if you can, register for yourself. All right. I see also Hajia Alima Sagito is here. And very soon, we're going to invite our speaker. Um, we're just checking on him. We are not, uh, we will get our speaker on quickly. But I also want to talk to you about the growth journey. There are a few of you who are on the platform who have been on the growth journey. The growth journey is a 15 week program based on John C. Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And the purpose of the growth journey is to invest in yourself. You cannot give what you don't have. So the growth journey is to help you to look at your life differently, to invest in your life, and to make you a better person. Because you cannot lead others if you cannot lead yourself. And in those 15 weeks, we're going to look at different dimensions of leadership, how to, how to lead your life intentionally, how to know yourself, self-awareness, how to handle pain, how to you know, persevere and lead consistently, and all other dimensions. And you would really, it's very practical. You're going to have like-minded people who are willing and eager to grow themselves share their experiences, and it's all discussional and, and applying the principle and learning from each other. And so we encourage you. We are uh, ending the fourth cohort of 15 people uh, in the next two weeks, and then we're going to kick off uh, the next cohort. So please register now. Register now. Um, get in touch with us and register. All right? So we are... Uh, getting ready. Um, I can't see my speaker online now, but I think he will be joining very soon. Or oh, he's here. All right. Dr. Pebby is here. All right. So uh, Gerard Foucault is here. Fred Ayesu is here. And I can see George Akpabli Sr. is here. Fayat, Fayatu Abdumumen is here. Um, I see Doris Atta is here. All right. So um good so uh we we thank you thank you uh douglas i see you're not experiencing any echo so thank you very much all right so this evening we are going to the fundamentals of leadership um how do you become a leader and there are many many theories about becoming a leader people think that leaders are born and so you're born with it but others also think leadership can be taught. Now, if it can be taught, how do you teach leadership? Okay? I mean, if, if you want to swim, you cannot just sit by the side 
and just read about swimming and after a year you say you are a swimmer but what about leadership Every week when we come on this platform and we share ideas from great leaders sharing their experiences, what impact does it make on you? How do you become a leader? And if you're a leader, how do you become a better leader? Are there methods and ways by which you can become a better leader? Now, we have um, another John C. Maxwell certified coach who is a doctor, uh, who is no stranger to this platform, Dr. Yao Pebi, is a, a medical doctor, but he's also studied and written about leadership, and he's set up a leadership organization, training leaders for different organizations. He has an organization which has offices in several countries trying to grow leaders, and he's been growing leaders for years. So this question about how do you train leaders? How do you coach leaders? How do you become a leader? Is it by accident? It is because you see and, and you, you catch it because you have a spirit like you're possessed with it or what? So um, without much ado, I'm going to open the floor and invite a friend, my brother and and, 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 and a great teacher, he's actually my inspiration. The first time I met him, you know, was one of our Live to Lead platforms when he came in and he energized the place. And I've gone through some of his programs emotionally, uh, uh, spiritual intelligence, emotionally intelligent people, and so on and so forth. There are so many things that Dr. Pebby is doing. He has his uh, children's library that is encouraging children to read and grow to become leaders. So he's somebody who knows a thing or two about how to grow leaders. So the question, are leaders taught or caught? Is leadership taught or caught? Dr. Yapevi, uh, good to have you. The good. platform is yours now. And uh, you're welcome to the leadership platform once again for maybe fourth or fifth time. Thank you very much, Doc. We well, thank you. Thank you. It's a it's a pleasure. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. We can right. hear you. We know I that will. your background is you don't have a green background, maybe so it's getting a bit coloring your face, but it's okay. Oh, I I do have a uh, green background, so I don't know what's Okay, but, but we can see you, we can hear you. So um, the floor is better, yours. Would it be better to get rid of the background? Um yeah, if if your background is safe, no problem, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go ahead. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you very much for, for inviting me. I have a few slides to, to share as well. Um, I realize that the, uh, the stream yard is not picking it. Um, we're supposed to have had this time of uh, troubleshooting earlier, but I got caught in Accra traffic coming from uh, PBS. And so, uh, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, we can I can pass it on to uh, Abigail to to share the slides while while I speak. Now, Doc, I think it would be better if leadership you, if you take off the virtual background and then we can see you clearly. Okay, let's see. Where is the, okay, virtual background. Voila.
All right, I think, uh, yeah, this is good. This is much better, right? Yes. Okay, all right. All right, fantastic. And uh, Priscilla, if you don't mind, um, maybe you can share the screen, uh, the screen alongside. It's uh, not allowing me to, to share here. All right, so leadership is taught, not just caught. And I know this is kind of a provocative uh, statement, um, but some people hear it and they're like, oh, well, you know, is it everybody who is able to, you know, go to university or, you know, go for a seminar and learn how to lead, that kind of thing. Um, but the truth is there's an aspect, there are aspects of leadership that one can catch, right? Uh, because leadership, there's, a, there's an aspect of leadership that is life on life. You know, you look at the way you observe people, much more or less like an apprenticeship, you know, and say you pick this, you know, if you notice, there are some people uh, who have already have been to, I go to particular churches, and soon you see that they are talking like that, they are their senior pastor, right? You know, if you see people who go to, you know, Duncan Williams Church, you know, they, they, they pray a certain way, you know. I, I, I remember looking, going to speak in, in Morga uh, at East Sudan Abbas Church, and it was so interesting. This is more than, my goodness, this is about 15 years ago. And even back then, there were people who were wearing braces in the church, you know, and even keeping some kind of back bush, if you remember the early days of East Sudan, you know, he would always wear braces and have some kind of back bush kind of thing. And people were, were people are caught that, right? So there's an aspect of, 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 of leadership that can be caught by hanging around people. Just like you know, people can't start cussing and swearing, you know, when they hang around certain people. So that happens. But the argument we are making today, and I'm going to show you um, a number of slides to that effect, is that leadership is not just caught. There are aspects of leadership that are prime and fundamental that must be taught. You, you, you can't, you can't um, just get up and fly a plane. There are aspects of flying a plane. You can look, you can go and sit in the cockpit and say, okay, this is what he does. Okay, this is how he puts his headphone on. This is what he does. But there are aspects of flying a plane that you have to be taught. Otherwise, you will never be able to fly a plane. And ladies and gentlemen, I am passionately sharing about this because I sat in medical school for seven years, seven to eight years before getting a license to be able to practice. Even then, even then, when you get out of medical school, you have a provisional license and you're supposed to still, as a health officer, you are still under some consultant supervision for two years before you can get your full license. You need a license to practice nursing. You even need a license to drive. But somehow, we think when it comes to leadership, which to me is more important than all these others because it is the tide that lifts all these other boats. Somehow, when it comes to leadership, we think, oh, you know, you can just do it. You can just wing it. Choboye, choboye, that's leadership. No, no, no. And the evidence is the kind of of uh, results we've seen in, in, in our part, especially in our part of the world, all right? So if the slides are ready, um, Abigail, I'd rather that you share the slides so that, um, because um, StreamYard is saying that it cannot pick, it cannot pick the slide, uh, or, or maybe I can just share my screen instead of, um, okay, hold on, let me, let me share my screen here. Oh, are you are you sharing Chris now? Fantastic. All right. Thank you very much. So yeah, you can go to the next the next slide. You can move to the next slide.
Yes, that's right. So that's the topic. Leadership is taught, not just caught. If you move on to the next one, the next slide. So this, for, for, for starters, and, and a lot of scholarly work has been done on leadership, and it's been shown that it's funny, but quite a number of scholarly works don't even define leadership in, in their work, which is fascinating. All right, so I want to clearly state what I mean by a leader. All right, and there are over 300 definitions, or actually about 360 definitions of leadership. All right, I have done, I've learned leadership, I've caught leadership. Um, some of my mentors, you know, uh, one of my favorite mentors, a Taiwanese man, uh, Taiwanese American, I learned a lot of leadership from him. In fact, um, when I was a World Vision Youth Ambassador, when I was about 18 years old, 1996, um, I, 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 that's when I got to meet him. He was the head of World Vision Taiwan, and I caught a lot of leadership from him. But he also taught me, you know, uh, quite a great deal of leadership, all right? And a leader is, this is the definition that I have coined after reading so many of them. I had a, had a master's in leadership. I'm actually in a doctoral program in leadership. And so I really absolutely believe that there's a part of leadership that must be taught. This is the, the definition I have coined from different things. I adapted this one from Trixia Partners, but I've tweaked it as you know as significantly. A leader is a responsible person, a responsible person who serves and influences people to achieve a shared noble purpose. There are three important factors here. There's the person of a leader. There are the people the leader leads. All right, and it's from the team the leader serves right to the big constituents that the leader has. And what is the point of this relationship? What is the point of this process of leadership? It's towards a certain purpose. All right, that's why we say that without vision, there's no leadership because it's, to a, it's for a certain goal, it's for a certain dream, it's towards a certain end. So remember those three P's of leadership the person of a leader, the people the leader leads, the purpose that they're going towards. Now, as we go on, you will realize that there are things that you need to learn about the person of a leader, about you as a leader. You will be shocked how many things you will not just catch, how your personality affects leadership, how your emotions determine leadership. In fact, research has shown that your emotions, your emotional intelligence will determine, you know, easily 80 to 90 percent of your success. All right. And, and, and who will teach you this? How will you know this? You know, all right? You learn that there are things you need to know about people. There are ways to relate to people. If you've read even a simple book like How to Win Friends and Influence People, you see that and influence people. That's leadership right there. It, it's, there are things you can learn. Some people are wondering, why don't I have any friends? Well, if I start coaching them, they probably will re begin to realize that, well, it's because you're more interested in yourself than you're interested in people. Well, because you don't even remember people's names. But everybody's name is like music to their ears. When you remember people's names, my goodness, you will influence them. They will befriend you. You will follow them. How will you know that? How will you know about purpose, vision? How do you craft vision? Where does vision come from? Do you know that it can be learned? Do you know, how do you cast vision? Apart from crafting vision, there's a way to cast vision. How did I know to cast vision so much so that, like, like, like Sam is saying, that I have learned organizations that have started in Ghana and are in 25 countries, all continents. I have been the president of a ministry of a, of a, of a not for profit in Canada uh, for over eight years. I'm a you know, Canadian board and other international things. How come? Because I learned it. How, how was I supposed to learn by osmosis that when you're casting vision, you should do it clearly, three C's, you should do it compellingly, and you should do it creatively? Who will tell you that? How, like, how will you know? And I can tell you, for example, that oftentimes in, 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 in the Ghanaian context, for example, I wish that every time the president comes up, the president of Ghana, he will recast vision. Does he know that vision leaks? That vision must be repeated and repeated and repeated until people are sick and tired of it, but that's only when they are getting it. How is he supposed to catch that? All right. So... Uh, just this definition of leadership and leadership is always within a certain context just this definition alone that there are things you need to learn about you as a person and sometimes I do a six hour uh, uh, workshop just on self-awareness, only self-awareness we haven't talked about self-discipline we haven't talked about <laughs> you know so there is a lot to learn and there's an, unfortunately a lot we assume if you're a leader you are first a responsible person 
If you are not responsible, even in scripture, if you are not responsible to take care of your own household, you are disqualified from taking care of God's household, the church. So you need to be a responsible person first who serves and influences people to achieve a shared noble purpose. All right, let's, let's, let's move on. So I, I want to tell you why I am so convinced about this. Why I am so convinced that leadership is taught and not just caught. I'll give you an example first. Um, on a global level, um, well, first I'll give you an example uh, continentally, then I'll give you a country example, then I'll give you an organizational example, and then I'll share from my own life evidence that leadership is taught, not just caught. This is the first one. Next slide. So this is a, a, a very, very amusing story, but very sad as well. So as you know, Sam and I, um, are part of uh, you know, John Maxwell certified trainers and coaches and speakers uh, in Ghana and, and, and Africa. Now, a number of us um, have been traveling with John to certain countries to do what are called country transformation initiatives. We've done this, as you can see, this is an example from Dominican Republic. We've done it in Guatemala and other places, you know, because we know that everything rises and falls on leadership. And we are assuming, if you are on my social media, you probably saw my, my post this morning, that we assume that people would, who are so-called leaders will know how to lead, right? Because you're a DC or MMSC or because you are parliamentarian or even president, minister, we expect that you'll be able to lead. In a way, in a way it's unfair because the fact that a person has become an elected leader doesn't mean they can lead. But in a way, it's also unfair for them to do that to us because if you put yourself as a leader, we expect that you, you have certain leadership paradigms and, 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 and competencies and attitudes and skills, all right? So we've been doing this kind of thing in various countries, you know, and countries literally have been transformed by this initiative. So a number of us were thinking that there's a certain African country that has a lot of potential. Let's work with John Maxwell to be able to come and do one of these initiatives in that country. By the way, um, the, you know, the smartness of Paul Kagami, he had already invited John to do this in Rwanda. So we wanted John to do this in another country. And so we started working towards, you know, you know John meeting the, press, the, 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 the leader of that country, you know, and all of that. It was hard. You know, now, I mean, and John doesn't come cheap. You need, hand, you know, I'll tell you how much you need to be able to get John to fly from, you know, Atlanta or which is where he usually works, but he lives in Florida to be able to come and do such a thing. Eventually, in fact, one of our colleagues, even he who, who works in the U.S., actually took out some of his retirement savings. We call it 401k in the U.S. to be able to get John to meet this president. And it was still hard to get. Eventually, it happened. But do you know something? To my shock, this president of a whole nation in Africa had not even heard about John Maxwell. Did not know about John Maxwell. And I was like, what? I mean, John Maxwell is not the only leadership expert, you know, but it made me wonder, so who does he read? You know, is it, is it Warren Bennis? Is it North House? Is it like, like, and that, that was the moment I knew that that country wasn't going to do well. Because leadership is not just caught, it is taught. And unfortunately, my fears have come to pass. The person started well, but it's not going on well. Because leadership is not just caught, my friends, it must be taught. So that's, 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 that's a, a continental example, you know, that I want to give you. But next slide, let me give you a country example that, because the, the, this, this is my, my friend, uh, Omani Boama, who were classmates in medical school. And I remember um, when he was he was in office and some of our younger friends as well, you know, um, I knew Kujito Ablaka when he was even running for, you know, SRC on campus and things like that. You know, they are contemporaries, a lot of these younger ministers in their government at that time. And, and that government had asked me to do something for them. Uh, Prof. Mills was president at that time and there were these... Uh, they wanted to let the, the ministries and departments and agencies kind of do a, a, a show, let people see what they do, you know, you know, a trade show kind of thing. And I was invited to speak. And I remember sitting on the, on the podium, uh, you know, and, and, and just thinking, just looking around at 
how many of people who were with me in school, either university generally or on my impact, on my impact client medical school, who were now ministers or deputy ministers? And it dawned on me, oh my goodness, we were never really taught leadership in school. And yet these guys are in charge of the nation. And I remember clearly, this was at the conference center, saying to you know, Omani and, and the others, guys, nobody taught us leadership in school, especially medical school. Guys, you've got to learn. You've got to learn. Because leadership is not just caught, it's taught. Now, I'll leave you, those of you who are in Ghana, to determine whether you think they really did learn leadership. And so we're stellar as ministers or they were not. I'll leave that for you to judge. Next slide. How, why am I convinced leadership is caught, is taught, not just caught? Organizationally. Now, for about eight years, I was president of this Canadian organization. I'm just showing you some of our leaders. If I went through the pictures, everyone you notice comes from a different part, not only of Canada, but a, part, a certain part of the world. You know, uh, from Brazil to Singapore and Hong Kong and Thailand and Vietnamese and Colombia. Literally, it was a global organization. And if you're going to lead cross-culturally, you've got to learn. You don't just catch it. You don't just catch it. It is learned. All right. There's an aspect you can catch. Some of us are more natural and naturally meander into our cultures than others, but you need to be taught. But anyway, be that as it may, what again convinced me that leadership must be taught and not just caught was one of our leaders. In fact, it was my vice president of finance and administration. He's not in this picture. But when I took over to lead this organization, um, I was young, I was 35. This man was already, you know, in his 50s. Uh, actually, yeah, well, late 50s, all right? And actually, he retired during my time. And in Canada, we retired at 65. So much older than me, literally my father's age. And I would insist that every month we have a leadership training session. And so he began to pick things up. He began to pick things up. Because I could tell that technically he was good at his work as an administrator, as a finance person. But nobody had really trained him in leadership, how to set an influence, especially the influencing people, towards a purpose. You won't believe it. This guy grew so much in his leadership that soon he began to influence his church to send many people to every year to this Willow Creek Global Leadership Summit. And, I'm, I, and I remember him saying to me, yeah, I have been part of organizations for years. I've learned things on the job, but it's until you came as president that I actually began to learn the principles and the practices, the way to lead. Guys, you can be on the job. And that's why it worries me when we assume that because somebody has been a chemistry professor for 30 years, he can become vice chancellor of a university. That's a mistake. Or because somebody has been in the ministries, you know, ministries of finance or works and house or whatever it is for so long, now it's time because he's a principal, now it's time for him to know. Leadership is not just caught, it must be taught. I hope that at the end of this session, every one of us will tell ourselves that, listen, I'm going to read a book, I'm going to take a course, I'm going to do something to grow in my leadership because you won't just catch it. And I will actually give you all this evidence to that effect. I want to give you one more evidence that leadership is, 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 is taught, not just caught. If you can go to the next slide. I started learning leadership. I have a natural tendency to lead. And it's, 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 a, it's a tendency, and I'm intentionally using the word tendency. But I realized as I began to read, as I began to learn, especially from John Maxwell, John Maxwell was one of the early people who introduced me to the concept of leadership. One of the key things that made me distinguished as a leader was that I began to learn that there's a difference between leadership and management. And I know that Sam inter, you know, had a, a guest on this show who talked about that, so I'm not going to go into that, but... Right now, we could do a whole hour on the differences between leadership and managers. And I can tell you, there are many people who are, lead, who are managing in this country, managing on this content, who think they are leading. The two are not the same. But unless you are taught, you will not know. And that managers, managers are good at, at, at systems and maintaining things. Leadership, and, leadership is about creating change, casting vision creating change. So an easy way to test whether somebody is a leader or a manager is to ask them to create change. A great manager 
can maintain systems, but a great leader can bring change. I, I mean, we can do a whole hour, I have slides on, on the differences and things like that. But the point I'm making is that if I hadn't learned leadership, I wouldn't even know that there's a difference. Now I want to give you a couple more reasons. So I've given you enough uh, concurrent uh, evidence, all right? Um, that leadership is, it must be taught. It, it can't just be caught. But let me give you a bit of a historical evidence that leadership must be, if you can go to the next slide, must be taught, not just caught. Yes. So in the 1840s, uh, and by the way, I am, I am uh, creating an online course which will be available later in the year. It's called Deep Lead. And this is a growth series. There's a growth series, there's a success series, and there's a significant series. And as part of that course, we actually will do a 200-year history of leadership, the, you know, the theory of leadership. And you would see that in the 1840s, the great man theory was what held sway. And some alluded to that in this introduction, that great leaders are born not made. You are either born with leadership or you don't have it. Now, over the years, that has been dispelled. There are people who have traits of leadership, who have tendencies, like I told you about my own self, but it's been realized that leadership can be learned. It is not just you are born with it or you are not. It's not just the function of nature. It's also a function of nurture. If you can go to the next slide. So between then and now, this is just a summary. You know, the great man theory, there's been trait theories. So, trait theories basically say that, okay, people who are great leaders have certain characteristics. Those who are not have certain characteristics. That has been debunked. If you look at certain leaders like Alan Mulally, who led Boeing successfully and then went on to lead Ford successfully, you wouldn't even think he's a leader. So trait theories have come and, and gone. And all of these theories have a certain truth about them. Behavioral theories, situational leadership, transactional leadership, transformational leadership which is the flip side of transact transactional leadership. Management theory, servant leadership, authentic leadership. Now, you know, people, especially in Harvard, talk about adaptive leadership. Like, yeah, all these shades of leadership, leadership, and it can be and must be taught. It cannot just be born with or not, or just caught by in the atmosphere uh, or not. Leadership is a nuanced subject, and we do ourselves a great disservice by thinking that we'll just catch it. We've got to stop that. I don't want to call it nonsense, but we've seen where it has led us as a people because we have people at the helm, people in the driver's seat who have not learned how to drive, who don't have a license, but are in the driver's seat. Next slide. So having established, you know, why leadership, you know, why I say leadership is taught and not just caught, let's look at what are some of the things that we can learn or that can be taught? All right, next slide. So this, this is an adaptation of something that uh, when I was doing my master's in leadership, there, were, there, were, there, were these, there was this framework. There were six things that were part of the leadership formation. All right. And I've adapted them, uh, to them a bit for what I do at, um, at, at the leadership development organization that I lead. Uh, and, and, and executive coaching organization. And these are some, and, and at the HUD group where we do this with a faith emphasis, we, we use the same framework, all right? First, and so this is a process and a product of leadership formation. First is there's got to be classically informed practice. When we do it in the faith context, I, really, I usually talk about biblically informed practice. In other words, as you do leadership, you need to learn that leadership comes from a certain place. All right. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of the classics. If you do that, if you read some of the works of Plato and Aristotle and Socrates, the things they've talked about leadership, the Chinese history, the Bible, there's a lot that all of these ancient things say about leadership that we've got to learn and embrace and understand what leadership, what leadership, the source of leadership. So the origin of leadership, the objective of leadership, we've got to go back to these classical, these classics, all right, and, and, and learn them. You know, one of the, I have no time to go into one of my favorite uh, Aristotle works, but we've got to realize that our leadership must be informed. Our practice of leadership must be informed by the classics, all right. Secondly, what should constitute leadership development? Character development. That is the heart of leadership. 
the, at the end of the day, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. Lead character is the foundation on which leadership is built. You know how people like quoting, you know, a man's gift will bring him before kings. That's true. You know, a man, your gift will take you high like this. The question is, can your character keep you there? The heart of leadership is character development. And so if you do all these leadership studies or you caught this and whatnot, but the character component is missing, your leadership will come crumbling down. In fact, two leadership experts, um, Dennis and Nanus, they came out with a this, um, with this, with this research to show that 90% of leadership failures are character failures. 90%. 90% of leadership failures are not because, oh, the guy couldn't read, the guy was a poor speech maker, the guy didn't know about his field. 90% of character fail uh, leadership failures are character failures. So if we're going to learn to lead, character formation is an essential part. Then there's the need for a reflective lifestyle. And even that must be learned. I'm telling you, as you can tell, I'm very energetic. I go here from there, etc. I've had to learn to be reflective. And even then, I'm still learning better and better to be reflective. I had a time with my coach, my executive coach, on a Friday, you know, and, and that was part of the discussion we had because I said, I've come a long way, but I still need to be much more reflective than I am today because that is the rhythm of leadership. Great leadership is reflective leadership. And sometimes I wonder how many of our leaders actually stop to think and reflect and see that how we are leading this country, is this the way to go? How I'm leading this department, is this the way to go? Because if you really reflect, there are certain things people will say. There are certain behaviors that will stop. The rhythm of leadership. And by the way, there are certain great ideas we can only get when we stop. That's how the European Union was formed. Do you know that, by the way? If you go and read the history of Jean Monnet, he was just taking a walk. He was taking a walk and reflecting and wondering, hmm, how can we stop Europe from getting into another world war? This was after, after 1940, the, the end of the Second World War. So, well, there must be something about our resources. All right, how do we get Germany and France to agree on coal, you know, sharing coal? Um, Long story short, that's how the European Union was, was born. Guys, reflection, all right? Learn the rhythm of leadership, which is reflection. Now, the goal of leadership is to be on mission and have a team that is on mission. And of course, there's the mission in the, you know, in the Christian sense, but there's mission in the general sense as well. The goal of leadership is mission. And particularly if you're somebody who's a, a person of the Christian faith, if the goal of your leadership is not to advance the mission of God, then what is it about? Now, the context of leadership, and I may allude to that when I talked about the cross-cultural team, the multicultural team that I was leading. Guys, that is the context of leadership today. You cannot lead effectively today if you don't know anything about cross-cultural leadership. Because your, 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 your phones are coming from, you know, maybe Huawei in China, you know, your... your, your uh, other equipment are coming from India. You are in conversations with people in, in Silicon Valley. I mean, with global diversity is the context of leadership today. And if you're going to be a leader, that is a cut above the rest. You've got to learn. You've got to grow in GQ, global intelligence. And it is not just caught, my friends. It is taught. Now, again, continuing development Lifelong learning in a diverse community is a way, an important input into leadership development because leaders are learners. And if you remember some of the quotes that were put in the invitation to come for this, lifelong learning is a leadership thing. The day you stop learning, you stop leading. In fact, you lose your right to lead. Leaders are learners. Learners are leaders. You've got to tell yourself, I will be a lifelong learner so that I'll be a lifelong leader. And finally, the implementation of leadership is in organizations. Whether it's small organizations, whether it's a club, whether it's large corporations or whatever it is, you know, once you bring two or three people together, you have an organization. You have an organism. 
okay and they are organizational dynamics that no matter how long you sit in an organization if you don't learn those dynamics you will not lead well so organizational dynamics must be learned for example I, I was I was I went to speak at GIS Ghana International School on Thursday, and I was having a conversation with the board chairman just before we went out for me to speak, and he was talking about you know what is the next S curve for 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 the organization for GIS. By the way, on Thursday, September first, GIS turned sixty seven years, right? It was actually it just started before Ghana became independent, nineteen fifty six. But he was saying, what is the next S care for us? And I immediately understood what he was saying because I have learned leadership, all right? And I know that when, you know, every organization actually begin to need it. You have vision, you know, people have them. It begins to go up like that. It's a sign of that care, right? Now, the thing is, at some point, it will start to peak and then it will begin to go down. The smartness of leadership, the smart leaders do that, know that when you are about to, get on the plateau, you institute another SKF. You start another program, another vision, another project, whatever. To, how did I know that? How did, could I understand that language coming from Kofi Papa? Because I have learned that they are organizational dynamics and this is how to lead. Guys, you can't just catch it. It must be taught. So I want to give you one, perhaps one more, one last example about, and this is from how do we actually practicalize this? How do we learn leadership if it's not just caught? And I have a diagram here, which I, I, I created, I adapted from uh, Hoax Cube. I actually picked this from part of one, of one of the papers I wrote during my master's. And so forget about the mirror mission part, but basically it is this. Whatever kind of leadership learning you want to do, now that you know that you must do, it must follow adult learning principles. Because adults, as adults, we learn differently from children. So we'd like to talk about pedagogy, but technically, adult learning is andragogy, all right? So the first important thing about how you are going to learn to lead is what mode are you going to learn to lead in? Is it formal education to learn leadership? Is it non-formal education? Is it informal education? Now, I don't think it's one or the other. You should use as many modes of education as you can to grow your leadership. So how I started learning leadership was very informal, you know, like, like you know, in my home. And all of that. The first born, my, you know, my dad was senior prefect in Adisco. My mom was senior prefect in Achimota. You know, so we have the mix, you know. So the learning thing, there are informal ways of learning. There are things you can catch if you like. There are things that, you know, I was, I was, some people will call me and tell me, okay, when you're organizing a program, do this, do that. There's an informal education. But I started doing some non-formal education, which is a bit more organized, but you don't get a degree for, you know, um, with, for, with John Maxwell. John Maxwell has an organization called Equip, you know, and I started learning things from there. You know, and Equip has all these notebooks. I started learning about strategic planning, started learning about vision, started learning about how to communicate, all these things. And that's non-formal. What we're doing here is non-formal education, right? But it is still education. Every week, and God bless you, Sam and the team at CTL, every week Sam is doing something every week, you know, and he's literally, and, and, and Albert Okran, you know, my friend Albert and Comfort also do a similar thing with, with Springboard, the virtual, you know, leader. this is all part of education. You don't just have to sit in a classroom for it to be, to, to learn leadership. You can learn from such platforms. But guys, if you have an opportunity to have formal education, grab it. So I've had, I've had informal, I've had non-formal. And at some point I said, you know what, I've been learning leadership you know, like John Maxwell has a book, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Like, when I was a student, you know, university, like, I, I always yeah, torn the thing apart. I created my own courses even out of it, you know, that we use at the hard group and other places. You know, so when I, at that point, I was like, no, why don't I get some formal education in leadership, although I have all this. And that's part of how come I did this work, all right? So think about it. What mode or moods of leadership learning do you want to do? Informal, non-formal, formal. 
And then what is your the, 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 the time fix? All right. You could do this leadership training, leadership development. When you are a service means that you are not in any particular service. You are not leading anywhere, all right, in, in per se, right? But you realize, hey, Dr. Pepe says I need to grow in leadership. So, yeah, why don't I take this course? You know? But there's also pre-service. So, for example, if you know that you were just called to be a minister of state and you know that you are, you know, your leadership is somewhere, you can shout, but that doesn't mean you're a leader. You could do pre-service. You can, you, can, you can say, okay, I'm going to take a, you know, a, a one-year course at Gimpa or whatever it is, you know, a six-month course. There's pre-service. But there's in-service. And that's what I highly recommend, all right? Um, because the things you learn, the theories and things you learn while about leadership is great when you're already in, 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 in the leadership position and leadership roles. So that you can immediately apply, you know, and you can bring your problems in the work, the challenges you are facing your leadership, and you get some theories or some kind of insights. So I really love in service. So even when I was doing my masters, you know, and it, and it took me three years, and I was happy that it would take three years because I spaced it out because it was while I was still president of, you know, a Canadian organization, while I was still global CEO of the Hug Group, while I was still doing whatever else that I was doing. So in service. Is great. I really love it. But you could also have interrupted where you stop what you're doing. You say, okay, I'm taking a steady leave. I'm not doing, I'm no longer at work. I am going to study for five years or PhD in leadership, or whatever it is, and come back. But I really like in service. Okay. So think about what modes of leadership you want to use to learn. Think about the various time phases, you know, um, in service, pre service, in service, interrupted. But what should be the things you learn, the methods? You know, and these are things Konja talks about. Uh, he's one of our leadership guys and, and, and adult, adult learning guys. You know, there's the character formation part or, or spiritual formation kind of things that you want to grow in. There's the head kind of things, the conceptual understanding things you want to grow, the cognitive aspects. There's the affective aspects, the emotional aspects, including emotional intelligence. And reflection plays a big deal there. People give you feedback. It's a great thing over there as well. By the way, I think I've done it here before. Self-awareness, you get self-awareness through reflection, you yourself reflecting, introspection, but also through feedback, all right? And then skills, actual ministry experience, if you're in ministry, or experiential, you know, experiential things. Because think this way. Whatever leadership development you do, leadership training you do, make sure it touches the three H's. There's head stuff, things you need to learn, like strategic planning, you know, vision, visioning, vision casting. There's heart stuff, all right, like attitudes. What about how do you develop courage? How do you develop conviction? You know, attitude now stuff, character stuff, and there's hand stuff, all right, skills, you know, communication skills, you know, things like that. So remember, head stuff, heart stuff, and hand stuff. All right. I think at this point, I don't know whether I have I have another another slide. I, I, it would be a good time to to introduce you guys to lift to lead because it is one of the non formal ways we are offering in Ghana, so that nobody has an excuse for saying, ah, oh, you know, I you know how nobody taught me when I was in university to lead. Uh, and even here that I'm sitting in the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, there are no chance when there's a conference, the big man will go, you know, please, 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 please. Once a year, John Maxwell himself gathers a faculty together. And maybe later on, uh, 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 Abigail and, uh, and Sam can show you the, the faculty this year. But these are people like Patrick Lencioni, you know, and John himself is speaking, right? that you can come and learn from, live, flowing from Atlanta. And we have local people that we have also arranged. In fact, um, we're talking this year, we've picked the theme, Leading with Integrity. And so we picked Patrick Ewa. And if you haven't heard the story, you should, um, about how they build leaders, how leadership is taught and caught at Ashesi. Come in here the kind of things they put in place to build in Ashesi graduates character and critical thinking and leadership skills. 
So Patrick will talk about, you know, from his own perspective, you know, leading with integrity. And then we have, think about it, Anglimo White, CEO of Roverman's production, will be there. Um, Gwen Addo, who's the CEO of the Hair Center, will be there. Patricia Oboda is CEO of Vodafone. There's a new National Civic Education uh, chairperson. She'll be there. I, I, I mean, guys, we want to change the narrative. If we have bad leadership, it is not just because people are wicked. Some people are wicked, some people are horrible, etc. That's true. But I think they are few and far between. I think most people we put in leadership in Ghana don't even know that they must learn leadership. And that is what we want to change. In fact, we as a team, you know, have a vision that the first Friday of every year will be Leader Day in Ghana. The day where every organization, you know, hospital, name it, is bringing their leaders to this, to this program. Let us come and learn. Let us come and meditate on what leadership is. Let us come and assess ourselves. Let us come and grow our leadership. Because guess what? When the leader gets better, everyone else gets better. When the leader gets better, everything gets better. John talks about the law of the lid. As a leader, you're the lid over your organization. You're the lid over your family. Imagine that you want your family, oh, we, can, we should get a new computer because these days, and the father, your father said, no, you know, let's just use typewriter. You know, you are the lid. You are the lid, guys. I don't know where you are leading, but you are the lid. And if you will learn to lead some more, if you learn to lead better, you will be lifting the lid. You know, people are hitting, people are hitting you right now. They say, Charlie, move so that we can we want to expand, we want to grow, we want to, and they are keep you keep hitting this lid. Learn to lead and lift the lid. And oh my goodness, people have more room to go. More room to go. Listen, it's a scary thought that Ghana will never grow past President Nane Kufwada. Ghana will never grow past President John Mahama or whoever else is in. It's a scary thought. Doesn't matter how smart the rest of us are in the country. Leadership is the lead, guys. So let's all learn to lift our lead, lift our lids by learning to lead better. Because, guys, leadership is not just taught, it's not just caught, it is taught. Thank you very much for listening to me and my thoughts. And I hope that we'll see you on October 7th. It's, a, it's totally virtual. It's online. Let's come to learn together. And no matter how much you know, there's more you can learn. I'm coming to learn more, you know, so that I can be even better. So you also come and learn more so that you can be better. And together, Ghana will be better. Together, Africa will be better. The principles of leading, they must be taught and they must be learned. And the thing about principles is they are no respecter of persons. If we live by them, we get a result. If we don't live by them, we pay for it. And obviously, many of our leaders don't even know that these laws of leadership exist, let alone live by them. And we are seeing the consequences. And we end up blaming the devil and blaming opposition and blaming whoever else. But last, a friend of mine said when I shared that their princi our principals, our leaders, must learn principles, the laws of leadership, so that we'll prosper and not blame principalities and powers. A friend of mine who was studying pediatric pulmonology in South Africa said, ah, in fact, if our principals, our leaders, will learn principles, we'll all be so inspired at, with their leadership and we'll all be so prospering, we won't even have time to be blaming principalities. Guys, let's do this together. Leadership is taught and learned. It's not just caught. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Doc. Thank you so very much. I believe that um, if you're on this platform, you have been inspired to learn more about leadership. Honestly, we would encourage you, and Doc has done the job for me already. Um, we, we don't just give you every week every week a lesson on leadership on this platform but every year for the last six years we have been bringing you live to lead and organizations 
are bringing people, even if your organization is not paying for you, just 790 uh, Ghana cities, 800 Ghana cities, once a year to invest in yourself, like Doc said, one of the aspects is you, the person, leadership starts with you. Mm. You cannot give what you don't have. You mm. cannot lead beyond you. This is just talk to us about the lead. So that's why we want you to become better. We want you to know more. We want you to enlarge your tent, your understanding, your perspective of leadership. And so we are doing all this. And those of you who know Doc knows, we at the seats at Center for Transformational Leadership are losing a lot of money. Some of my friends are saying, but Sam, why are you doing all these things? Where are you going to get the money? I said, well, mm -hmm. the most important thing is that let's get the mission accomplished. That's Make right. leadership a household name that people are willing to understand, learn from the beginning, you know, from the lowest, from the child to the oldest. So I encourage all of you to register for Live to Lead. And if uh, um, uh, maybe we'll give uh, um, what is her name? Uh, Prisla, if you have the Live to Lead promo, whilst Doc takes a breath, we take a quick break and then we'll come to your comments. Please ask questions. Doc likes to answer questions. So he wants, he likes hard questions. So please come up with hard questions. <laughs> then, um, so Abigail, over to you and uh, let's take a quick break and come back to see who is here. And I see a lot of comments already. You see, the only thing you've got to worry about tomorrow is making sure that you make today count. This is your day to learn how to change your world. I need you to focus on why you were born. Let's not lose what made us, but let's grip the future. And let's become the best version for next year. Most success is when a person develops ordinary qualities to an extraordinary degree through the application of hard, sustained work. Now, for some people, this is not easy, but there is no good reason for not doing it. You and I were created to make a difference. All right. Thank you very, very much. Um, I think at this point, um, um, Abigail, if you can share the link um, on both the Facebook and, uh, and, uh, and the YouTube for people to visit the website. I wanted to just say a few things about Live to Lead. Now, this year is going to be virtual, and we are offering this to you for $79. And I just want you right now, as you are listening, just go, go, just go live to lead website, and you will see the minimum that people are paying in the US is $179. And the premium tickets in the US is $1,800. They will put it $1,000. 799 and we are getting the same content for you at $79 because we've negotiated this for you. You will get it virtual and you are going to have three days. All the content you are going to have on the 7th of October is going to be available to your own passworded portal for three more days after the 7th, so the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. You can go back and review the material. But there is more. Even from now, once you go on the, on the link that Abigail will share, you would find bonus videos. You can go onto the bonus videos, learn, re review, and start sharing some of the ideas that are already shared as bonus. 
So you can review it. And once you register, those bonuses will be for you for the rest of your life. So there's a lot of value. In fact, you have like two lift to lids in this package that you can not afford to lose. Please register. Yes, there's some money to be made, but like uh, President Kufo says, uh, sometimes we know the cost of everything, not the value. And I promise you, the value that you're going to get at this lift to lead far outweighs any costs that you're going to pay. So thank you very much. Um, more people are in the house, Doc, and uh, Desmond Opon is here, Christopher Gavo is here, Kusiwa Mercy is here. Uh, oh, this past Pastor Chris and Kerry, Kerry Hair followers. Okay, they are here. Um, Michael Anan is here and he says, Thank you, Emmanuel Wulo is here, or always here with us. Victus Kwekupese is here, great and great program. Aletia SK Glavo is here. Albert Okran, very insightful. Albert, thank you for joining. Inusa Ajayi is here. Nana Abba is here. Sandra Conrad Kakraba, thank you for coming. He says, This is really eye opening, Doc. Um, Regina Ohi Osabute is here. Uh, indeed, Michael says, This is eye opening, Doc. And Kusiwa is giving you a thumbs up. Prisla from the University of Ghana campus is here. Uh, Emmanuel Ulo, uh, Willendor, uh, has he says this is a great presentation. I just want to know, and Doc, this is probably a question for you. I just want to know if leadership can be taught, mm. why is there the leadership deficit in most African countries mm -hmm. where mal leadership? like nepotism, corruption, underdevelopment, among others, abound. All right? I believe yeah. Doc has mentioned that briefly, but he will come back and address it. Um, is this in-person or virtual? Uh, Live to Late is virtual this year. If you want in-person, you can go to Atlanta, pay your <laughs> tickets, buy your hotel bills, and you pay um, as much as $1,800 apart from your flight and your hotel and your feeding, you can have in-person and you'll probably have lunch with John Maxwell with that kind of money, all right? But you have John Maxwell's presentations, you have all the presentations of the great speakers that um, Doc has mentioned, all of them will be in your portal for three days and you have other presentations from previous Live to Lead for $79 and it's going to be virtual this time. Maybe next year, we'll have an in-person session. So, Haja Alima, that's a question. That's answer to your question. All right. Um, all right. So, we have uh, uh, in the chat also the link. Please pick it and and, and go to the website. Emmanuel Achisogbi Achisogbi uh, he says, this is mind-opening presentation. And Hajia say, my other question is, is there a certificate after training? Yes, you would have certificate. Actually, you can have two certificates. You have a certificate that we will issue to you, but you can also apply for, um, for, for a certificate from Georgia State University. And they can give you a certificate as part of continual learning education for those of you who are in human resources management, it will count as credit uh, for human resource management development. So you would have that certificate. Um, I think that one you would have to pay maybe $25 for that one, but I will give you a free certificate. All right. Um, Aram, thanks for the education doc. Does passion play any role? in leadership all right so doc there are two or so questions for you if leadership can be learned why do we have misleadership in africa and iram is asking where does passion come in uh, as far as leadership is concerned all right i believe those are the two questions i picked so i bring up doc 
and then uh, he would um, he will come and address those questions. All right, Doc. Great. Over I, to I you. Really, those are the I comments. Really love, I, I really love Emmanuel's question. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I, want, <laughs> I want to know if leadership can be taught, why is there a leadership deficit in most African countries? Emmanuel, that is the very reason why we set up today's session, that people are thinking you either have it or you don't. But leadership can be learned. And so why are we not seeing better leadership? Because we are not finding people, we are not putting people in authority, in positions of power and responsibility who want to get better. Because if they want to get better, they can learn to be better. Unfortunately, a lot of people get there, and even when they know they can't, they don't have what it takes. They have already told themselves, but we are going to get, we are going to grab all that we can get. And so they are not competent in doing the job. Meanwhile, they are not interested in learning to be competent. At the same time, they say we are going to chop all we can chop. That is the problem. And that's why I gave you the example of, you know, of, of my friends, you know, people I was contemporaries with, you know, in, in university. And I said to them, my friends, you have come into power. Nobody taught us this stuff in, in, in school. Learn. Did they learn? It's for you to you know, de de decide. So we need learners in power. We need people who will come. And, and, and by the way, uh, both Sam and I are, are part of another organization called Breakfast Club Africa BCA Leadership. And, 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 and we are led by Africans. We are founded by Africans. And we have a vision to see, you know, a, a middle, a, a prosperous Africa. And we have a, a, a hope that one day, every leader, every African president will have a coach. I am telling you, you cannot have executive coach. Every African president can have, cannot have an executive coach and will see the kind of, of uh, moral leadership, as you call it, that we have. No, because you will learn to lead. You will learn to have integrity. You cannot tell your coach, I'll do this, and then show up and say, well, I didn't do it because you give a number of, you just give excuses. You know, no, that's, that's, that's boo. <laughs> you know, so if we get people who are willing to learn this moral leadership, as you call it, this nepotism, corruption, and development will be lessened. And I look forward to the time when it's actually eliminated because people who know how to lead have learned how to lead are in place or they have learned on the job and are doing and leading better. So yes, thank you for asking that question. If people are willing to learn, we will be better. Yeah. The other question then, is about um, passion. Yes, the other question about passion, that's what you absolutely leadership, I mean, passion plays a huge role in leadership. And always remember the three H's, right? The head stuff, you know, so strategy, vision, you know, all of that plays a role in leadership. Heart issues play a whole role in leadership from character, all right, and attitude to passion. It all part, uh, plays a part. And then skills, hand stuff, all right? Um, so, for example, uh, Winston Churchill is very known for, you know, galvanizing the free world, you know, against Hitler and the uh, and, and his forces during the World War. And he was a very passionate person, but he was also very skillful, you know, in the kind of ways he gave his speeches, you know. Um, you know but, but yes, passion plays a key role. And in fact, I remember a story about uh, uh, some, some guy who was an atheist and he was going to listen to a preacher. And so his friend said, what? You believe that stuff? And the guy said, no, I, I'm, I'm not going because I believe that stuff. I'm actually going to listen to that preacher because that believer, that preacher believes that stuff so passionately. You know, no, absolutely. I mean, set, uh, uh, and, and one man said, set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you burn. So yes, passion is absolutely useful in leadership. But, but the reason why we are talking about leadership, catching leadership and leadership being taught or learning leadership is that Passion is like a scalar quantity. If you remember some mathematics, there's, there are scalar quantities and there are vector quantities. Scalar quantities have magnitude but no direction, right? Vector quantities have magnitude and direction. The essence of our discussion today is that no matter how much passion you have, if it doesn't have direction, if it's not directed, 
it doesn't go anywhere. It does, sometimes it even does more harm than good. So what we are saying is that people should learn leadership so that we can channel these passions in ways that will be productive for our nation, for our continent, for our world. Uh, thank you so much. Let me bring up uh, Sarah, just in case, Sarah, you have a question for Doc. Um, we have a few more minutes. Yes. I have a question. I just oh. want to say, excellent delivery. I mean, the passion came through. If oh, anybody is oh, asking the question of passion, this is the passion for leadership um, that Doc has really transmitted to us, not only for us in Ghana, but on the African continent where he, Sam, myself, uh, also, as he said, part of the DCA leadership, where we are trying to transform African, African leadership. Our goal is to see Africa become a middle income continent by the year 2030. We have eight more years to go. That is a big challenge. And we want all of you, you are all leaders. Every leader needs a coach. You have coaches on this platform. Sam is here, Yao is here. I am here and we have a team of John Maswell coaches. We are also bringing to you the Leave to Lead. Lots of coaches who are going to be on the platform of Leave to Lead. And we want all of you to be there. This is your time to learn leadership as Doctor has said. And we expect a lot of you to come, not just you, don't come alone, come with your team because we believe in you. We are putting a 10 on your forehead as what John will say, we know you can be better leaders. So this is our way of helping all of us to grow together, to change our country, to change our communities, to change our world. So please take out your $79 and join us on the 7th of October. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Look, I have one question, and then we would wrap up. You wrap up with us. I mean, you talk about the various um, ways in which we can learn leadership in service, in service, pre service, and so on. And we also talked about uh, leaders who are in positions who don't want to learn. And we are looking into the future. How do we bring this leadership? thinking into our schools yeah. so that because they are coming the ones in yeah. they they've campaigned they've put in their money and they want to enjoy it anyhow they will not but we need to to bring a new crop of people who understand how do we bring this into our because our school curriculum does not make provision for these things yeah so what's your take on that it's it's a great question sam and it's one of the things that um, you and I should fight uh, <laughs> to fight to see happen, uh, and it will either happen in our lifetime or we will die still fighting, uh, because it, it is that leadership development, entrepreneurship, you know, um, and, and finance, you know, uh, financial wisdom, personal, personal financial uh, stuff. Those are three things that I, I believe are so key that must be inserted in in, in our curriculum. You know, so that it, it, these things are like the tide. You know, when the tide comes in, it raises all the boats, right? That 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 is what these things are like. You know, and if we if we would do none of these things, let us at least look at leadership development. And and you know, my wife and I run um, something called we call Peppy Cups. Uh, it's an online library uh, for we have about eight thousand children from two hundred and eighty schools, and already we have started teaching them leadership. In fact, that what I taught you about leadership is, is responsibility and, 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 and service and influence. We're already teaching them. And so we're already scoring them. You know, so your, your parents will score you every week. You know, how are you doing leadership? Responsibility, like, are you laying your bed? Are you washing your dishes? You know, that's responsibility. You know, are you helping your siblings? That is service. Are you positively influencing your classmates? That is the influence, you know? So we have started on our own in a small way, but we are hoping together with, and that is why we are hoping, in fact, in, in, in the, if you are here and you can you can help us with partnership and you know, sponsorship, please come on board because what we are hoping to do is that $79, you know, may be a lot for some people in, let's say, government service, 
but we are hoping that there are partners who come that are not only going to bring their, their staff, but are going to sponsor so that we have tickets to be able to give to some of these people in the public sector and younger leaders to come and learn. So yes, we may begin with such informal and semi-formal ways like CTL, like Live to Be, like you know, Pebby Cups, like you know, Springboard University and all of that. But I'm hoping that as this conversation continues and we see how vital it is, we can lobby for it to also become formal education, not just informal and not formal. Thank you so much, Yael. I, I really appreciate that. And uh, because we're just getting close to the uh, end of the time, I would just want to give you the platform to share with us your, your closing remarks. But guys, once again, I want to invite you to go to our website, livetoleadghana.com and you would have information. We've also shared um, the Leader Pass platform where the event will take place. So you already have access to the Leader, Leader Pass platform where you can also view the bonus videos that are available. You can view them right now without being a password. You can view them. Okay, just register, and register for preview and you will preview the videos. But when you register, and you pay for it, those videos will be for you, will be in your passworded portal for the rest of your life. The Live to Lead, the 7th um, October uh, event, both the local one and the international one, will be on your portal for three uh, days after the event. And so you can have time. So don't say, oh, on the 7th, I'm busy, I don't have time. Even if you don't have time, it will still be available for you on the 7th. Another opportunity is that if your organization wants us to come and rebroadcast the whole event after the seven, and we've done mm -hmm. that for some organization, which then gives you opportunity to interact, to discuss, and apply to your own settings, that is also available. It's your church, your club, your school. We've done rebroadcasts for schools, for campuses, and so on and so forth. So please uh, take advantage. The second thing is the growth journey. I'll talk about developing your character, your person, and you as a leader. We have a 15-week growth journey, which is ending in two weeks. Another one is starting. So please uh, go to our platform and register. That takes only 15 people for a cohort. So the early you come, the better. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, your closing remarks. Uh, your closing thoughts uh, as we close. Well, thank you, Sam and Sarah and the CTO for having me. I have enjoyed us collaborating uh, to make leadership a main discussion in our country. We are where we are today because of the quality of leadership we've had. No leader can deny that. We cannot blame the citizenry. We cannot blame principalities and powers. We cannot even blame colonial powers. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Leadership is cause, like others have said. Everything else is effect. And if we will all learn to lead better, we'll all live better. And so whether it's through informal ways, non-formal ways, or formal ways like getting a degree in leadership, Whatever way you can, please learn to lead better. Because when you do, when I do, everything else and everyone else will be better. I look forward to the day when everyone from the president to all our ministers and everyone to the class prefect, everyone has learned the paradigms and the principles and the practices that make individuals churches, communities, countries, continents, great and strong. These things are not just caught. You can't just catch it by osmosis. It must be taught. Let's learn to lead. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Perby. Uh, we really appreciate you. And we thank all of you uh, who have... Uh, uh, joined lately. I see a few people have joined lately, uh, but they're all doing good commendation. Uh, Reverend Isaac Kwashi says, awesome presentation watching from Dal Es Salaam. Thank you very much. 
uh, Reverend, I know that by now it's uh, three hours ahead, 11.30 p.m. So we appreciate you and, and Baladia also who comes all the way from uh, Dar es Salaam every Sunday to participate. Thank you very much. And all of you, thank you. And let us remember, we live for God. Tomorrow, Sunday, go to church and thank God for your life and lead better and learn to lead. Good night. God bless us all. And see you again next week when we bring you another subject on leadership as we continue learning more about leadership. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. You see, the only thing you've got to worry about tomorrow is making sure that you make today count. This is your day to learn how to change your world. I need you to focus on why you were born. Let's not lose what made us, but let's grip the future. And let's become the best version for next year. Most success is when a person develops ordinary qualities to an extraordinary degree through the application of hard, sustained work. Now, for some people, this is not easy, but there is no good reason for not doing it. You and I were created to make a difference.